right, everyone. It is me, Johnson Chan, and uh, today is July 14th, uh, a Thursday, I think. And the uh, video's out a little bit late. You know, I was playing my games, but also Twitter was actually down for quite some time. It, I just got back on, so you know, I haven't even fully done any research. But I mean, it's getting close to nine o'clock. I mean, there's really just not much going to be going on. At least from my point of view. So simply because we kind of already know what's going on. Inflation's out of control. Uh, the debt crisis is apparently is actually imploding. But central banks are like like firefighters trying to put out the fire. And you know it's not quite 9:30 yet, so we'll see what new manipulations are happening. Uh, apparently, this is actually a pretty big deal. Pro Producer Price Inflation Index, right? The PPI. It just it just simply uh, you know starts skyrocketing again. So this is probably another bad sign. So inflation is definitely you know not doing. Uh, oh, at least this is still working. All right, we're gonna join bricks. Yeah. So basically, this is actually important. Bricks is is. The, Western non pause cancer tyrannical evil might, uh, this is actually important, so that's why I have to do this. Bricks might I mean, the simple fact they're even attempting this basically just shows just how how far declining, how far de how far in decline the West has become, especially America. So, yeah, and I know there are some people like what's his name, Ian Bremer or whatever. I could have sworn he used to be like a ex CIA guy or something. Now he does like ec economic stuff, but I do know the name. And he's actually pretty well respected. He he's, he thinks that the U.S. dollar won't lose its dominance anytime soon. You know, he brings up some good points. Like, you know, we're stable. We're, ever, we're used everywhere. We're always the fallback position for, like, you know, economic chaos of people hoard dollars. Um, and also we respect property rights. Well, the problem is we don't respect property rights anymore. We just start seizing, seizing shit. Europe is doing it, right? We're doing it, right? Specifically with Russia. Now they want to. Now some idiots on the right, like Joe Kent, want to like seize Chinese-owned businesses and firms here in America, because like, oh, you know, CCP is buying up all our shit. I mean, the problem is it sounds correct, but it still sets a very dangerous precedent. It's like, oh, okay, well, if you're gonna seize everything, then why should we use the dollar? Because you're obviously not gonna respect property rights. It's just so stupid. It's just so stupid and frustrating. So, yeah, so I had to tweet about BRICS. BRICS is definitely, even Brazil is in BRICS, too, so. Nope, Brazil is also smart and is part of BRICS as well. Here. It's thinking 10 steps ahead while our stupid ears are <laughs> walking backwards 10 steps or more. Oh, okay. All right. So anyway, let's just, let's just see what's going on. All right. So obviously the stock market futures are not happy about uh, that producer price index and probably other bad economic news as well, but specifically inflation. Futures think it's dying warrants of negative consequences. Yeah, JP Morgan, I didn't retweet it, but JP Morgan also actually lost. They have to, Their earnings were down like 28% or something. So they're getting hit with the uh, recession. Yeah, Celsius is very bankrupt. Inflation continues to react to high food prices. So, so let's just see. Um, we're not Walmart. Uh, CPI. I mean, this is we already know about this. Okay, so we can ignore it. So bond yields right now are you know selling off like crazy. I mean, at some point, doesn't this have to price in this, right? Because everyone's already pricing in a full one per, uh, one percent percentage point uh, later this month, July twenty seventh. You know, our good neighbors up north, Canada, have, the Bank of Canada, right, Canada, they've already raised their interest rates, uh, central bank rates, by a full 1% as well. So, 
I mean, these should be, uh, this technically should be normal, right? But, you know, if it if it implodes again, like, you know, bang, 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 like Greg Manorino likes to warn about, well, I'm pretty sure the central banks will, you know, buy back up and then, you know, stabilize the debt market. Because, again, as we could see, you know, everything else has been going down, all right? Let's see, uh, reverse repos. I know I refreshed this, but let's just, yeah, reverse repos seem pretty steady. So they're not, so they're actually trying to deal with the inflation pretty well. June 28th, June 28th, June 14th. Yeah, I mean, IMF and Greg have said that there's a liquidity crisis in the, in like the debt market or the system's illiquid. So I don't fully understand that myself, but if I just use basic logic, why is it illiquid? Because everyone is pulling money out of the system. Why is everyone pulling money out of the system? Oh, because inflation's out of control. So why do you pull money out of the system, right? Meaning there's less dollars chasing, you know, the same amount of goods or whatever, right? Because you have to slow down the velocity of money, right? You slow down the velocity of money, and then therefore money doesn't change hands as fast, which means the economy slows down, right? Because people aren't making uh, as many transactions and making money and spending money as fast. So therefore, you know, prices have to come down. Right. So, but the effect of that is a liquidity crisis, apparently, which still it's like, I don't know, I don't think it's that bad. But I mean, obviously, anything's possible. And anything you and I know and Greg knows, obviously, the central banks already know, plus a lot more. And they've already had experience dealing with liquidity crisis back in the 2008 real estate crisis. God, I keep saying the word crisis so much. So... I mean, there's a lot of distortions, but things don't actually look as bad as it sounds. So I'm still of the opinion that, you know, they will stabilize inflation eventually, and they'll eventually fix everything, and then we'll go back to, you know, going back up and stuff, right? Again, you know, as long as they keep the debt market somewhat stable. And it's already pretty obvious that, you know, the, the central banks have a good, pretty decent handle on this, you know, the ability to buy the debt. Now they set now when they buy the debt, it's supposed to be massively inflationary, right? Like Greg says. So I don't know. I guess we'll have to see how uh, how that goes. I mean, there are other ways to deal with inflation, right? Beyond just interest rates, right? That's what all this other stuff that we're looking at here is. And apparently, the short the hmm, what's the right word? The lower that the Federal Reserve balance sheet goes down, apparently that also you know lowers inflation too. So. You know, it's a give or take. It's a give or take, you know? So, yeah. All right, so, all right, we'll see how this goes. I mean, I mean, this thing is so many. I, I barely even look at the bond market anymore because I just look to see, oh, does it go up a lot? Oh, okay, well, then I know the central banks will buy back in again. Uh, there is one possible factor. They could be lying on all these numbers. I don't know. I mean, anything's possible, again, but... A lot of this data, there's a lot of data. That's why they have like hundreds of thousands of employees throughout America, you know, creating the GDP numbers, reporting the inflation numbers and all that other stuff. You have to get all of them to lie, right? And then even if you have the upper level management people, you got to get enough of them to lie. So it, I, I don't know. I, I just think there's limits to how much you can lie, you know? And on top of that, they can't just say, Oh, inflation is down uh, a lot, but then everyone goes to the grocery store and prices keep going up. Like, that's just not going to work, all right? I mean, here, even here in New York City, people are bitching at the uh, Alvin Bragg or whatever, right? Because of the whole Bodega Guy, Jose Alba thing. And crime is really is out of control. Like, in fact, every time I went out, like, you know, there's like a, like a lot of time. I almost get, one idiot almost hit me with his bike because he ran, kept running the red light and I was walking because I had a walk signal, right? Stupid effing piece of shit. And then another guy I think might have robbed me through my Metro card, which wasn't uh, that much. But the point is, it's just like effing crime like everywhere I go, right? And it's just annoying. Oh, and then the day before that, some asshole like fired a gun. But I think it came from a car that sounds like a gun couldn't really tell, but it really sounded like a, it was definitely a loud gun-like bang, right? And I fired a gun before, so the sounds were very similar, right? It's enough to fool a police officer, too. I've seen a video of that. So it's like, you know, the, the, this, this fucking country is going to shit, especially in New York City. 
Uh, so my point is you can't lie about it because we actually see the effects in person right in our face so it's like okay what the fuck's going on you know all right so aside from that uh again i don't really see much uh, happening yeah i mean stocks are down but honestly i don't really care because everything's manipulated they'll just buy shit back up uh twitter is you know pretty much where it should be yeah that's fine um pdbc yeah i mean commodity prices are still pretty tame we should actually take a look uh change yeah wheat coal i mean it didn't really go up all that much i mean prices overall are still pretty low gasoline is down surprisingly crude oil is down oh yeah what's the actual price of crude oil? i prefer yahoo finance yeah crude oil is down a lot yeah, so inflation is definitely coming down. And I guess I'll end it on this, but I don't normally like agreeing with the Democrats and the shit libs and Joe Biden, but I think they're, they're actually correct. The inflation numbers are actually out of date because I already, we've already, I already done the research live on these videos. We've seen that commodity prices have all come down, right? Crude oil is definitely down. Federal Reserve balance sheet is down, and these things have been coming down as well, the money supply. As of two months ago, we still don't have the recent data yet, but chances are they're probably, they should be going down. And the reverse repos so far have been pretty stable. So it's just a matter of when do we see the effects of this deflation reflected in prices everywhere else. Because I've actually seen that at Target, some prices have come down slightly, right? Like ice cream, I think, and uh, mac and cheese, right? So, it's not a lot though, but it is co somewhat coming down. And because I'm cooking food now at home, I haven't been going to Burger King, right? Which means I pass by a gas station. And it's also really hot outside this the summer. So, you know, I have to really worry about overworking my heart, you know, because, you know, I'm, I'm getting older and fatter. So, you know, my body's not what it used to be. So the heat is actually a problem for me until I start, you know, losing the weight and, you know, I keep doing my, you know, jump rope stuff, which has been going great, by the way. I feel fantastic. I just got to, like, just, you know, keep doing it every day. <sighs> What's the point of this? Oh, yeah. So the inflation numbers should actually be coming down, which is why everyone's been pricing in rate hikes already in the future. It's way too early for that. Way too early. It's like... Like counting like counting your chickens before they hatch is uh, not something I would be recommending, right? Just take it one day at a time. Hell, even one month at a, or one economic report at a time. Ah, uh, stop thinking a big idea. Oh yeah, this is where I got from. J.P. Morgan uh, Chase earnings fell 28 percent after building reserves for bad loans. Bank suspends buybacks. Yeah, so I mean the simple fact that people are already getting defensive, especially J.P. Morgan. Yeah, I mean they're you know we'll weather the storm because everyone's already doing what they're supposed to. It's just it's just it's just like the needle at the hospital. He's got to get the jab. It'll hurt, but hopefully it'll be over with quickly. And I think so far from what I'm seeing, it should be able to do that. You know, but you know we'll see uh, what they pull off today. But again, if this thing tanks. It's not going to tank that much because, again, the central banks, they'll just come in and buy everything up again. So, it, I mean, it really is just a bullshit system. And as for the liquidity crisis, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't know. I know China's been having some problems, but I haven't heard too much uh, beyond. And China's very already a uh, very centralized, controlled economy. So, for sure, China is going to make sure it doesn't, like, you know, blow up in their, blow up in their face. You know, as for the rest of the world, I don't know. I guess we'll keep hearing about it. Greg will obviously stay on top of the liquidity crisis or a pending liquidity crisis that like the IMF even said is happening. But I'm not going to worry about it because, I don't know, I, I think there's still plenty of stuff, uh, plenty of shit. There's enough shit out there. It just means people have to slow things down, which is fine because if they slow things down, inflation has to come down, right? That's all it is. We're, we were running hot on easy money, like going like a million miles an hour. Now we're getting exhausted, right? You know, the world's heart, you know, to use a human anatomy, is like overworking itself. You got to slow down and, you know, catch your breath. 
And then that's all that this is, right? It has the potential to go into cardiac arrest, but central banks are like the doctor is just going to be like, no, that's not going to happen. So, yeah. Um, as So, I'm still pretty defensive. I'm in JP, JP JP Morgan C-Class. I've been buying up some Twitter shares because uh, Hindenburg Research, a notorious short seller firm, and Will Chamberlain are buying large amounts of uh, Twitter stock. Because of the because the Delaware lawsuit that Twitter filed against Elon Musk actually looks pretty solid. So basically, it really is should be fifty four dollars and twenty cents. Now anything can happen, but I mean the Delaware court isn't going to want to make a ruling that'll contradict itself and its tradition of being you know business friendly and enforcing contracts. And if they're going to follow tradition, which they are most likely, then that means Twitter basically has already won. So, I mean, I don't want to get into the whole thing. I already talked about it yesterday, and I left the little Chamberlain lake on that. So, so yeah, I have, like, you know, 12 or 14 shares of this. It's, like, a pretty safe gamble, I would like to say. You know, but if Twitter hits, like, 44, 45, definitely upper 40s, I'm not even going to wait for 54, 20, because there's still a chance that the Delaware court can rule in favor of Elon Musk. So I don't want to deal with that. I would rather just take the money and run, you know, so... I could sell it now for a small profit, but I'm, I'm going to wait for 40s. So, you know. Besides, I bought the shares of stock, so I could theoretically just hold it forever. You know, I could hold it. It's not like, it's not like stupid options where I have to, I actually have time pressure. All right. Anyway, uh, like, subscribe, share this video around. Um, thank you again to all the old and new people watching this video and this channel. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Uh, again, there's really just not much. I mean, today's just going to be a boring day. You know, this is going to be a boring day. Like, whatever bad thing that happens, it's just going to get bought back up or stabilized by the central banks and the Federal Reserve. All right? And since they're actually doing a pretty good job updating this every week, which is every Wednesday, right? The Federal Reserve balance sheet, the one they, I guess, they let us know about. I mean, it looks like they've got plenty of money and time to, like, just keep buying this shit up and then, you know, ride out the recession, right? Because they're... Because the only thing that we have to, the only last event really, aside from the interest rate hike later on uh, in July 27th, is the GDP report, the official one on July 28th. So once we finally get some kind of confirmation of a recession, then we should hit some sort of bottom, right? And then we flush out the rest of the negativity. Um, the only thing is, they could be lying about this too, because... This was negative 2.1. Now they're saying it's negative 1.2% after just one week. Like, it's a pretty big jump, right? This is a, I mean, this, this green line tells you what, what it is. It's like, it's pretty big jump. What range of top 10 and top and bottom 10 average forecasts? Okay. So the Atlanta Fed GDP now is definitely way more accurate than the so-called consensus. Uh, zero. Evaluation. Okay, this is only this only applies to the second quarter. So, in the middle of the second quarter, the GDP was actually going up, and then we've been declining since slowly. That's interesting, which also correlates with the problems with inflation. Pretty interesting. Yeah, that makes sense. Prices keep going up, so business activity has to slow, right? Because people don't have as much money, people cut back, compensate, therefore things slow down. And then, of course, that's reflected here. This is such a handy tool, GDP Now. I wish I, I never, I, I can't believe, can't believe I never knew about this tool. Yeah, you know, that's why I like doing these videos. Yeah, anyway, I'll let you all go uh, before you know we ramble on too much. And yeah, I mean, we might go back doing uh, cryptocurrency projects. In addition, I'll st I still like doing these stock market things, so this is definitely a permanent thing on the channel now, like five days a week, I guess. And then, you know, I'll throw in some extra, you know, extra crypto uh, content, right? I mean, most of them are going to be scams or failed projects anyway, but once the, once the economy starts coming back, once money starts flowing back into cryptocurrencies and the stock markets and everything, it's off to the races again. I mean, shit, Sphere is already like 1.3 cents now or whatever. All right, so it's off to the races. And yeah, I'm seeing that crypto, despite everything that's been happening, it's resisting price downward pressure very well. 
All right, I mean, look at this. The stock markets are tanking right now, the futures, but crypto's like, eh, whatever, another day at the office. This is actually indicating to me that the bottom might actually be around here. I, I don't I, I don't think we're going to hit 16K Bitcoin. If we do, it's not going to last at all. Like, it's just going to immediately bounce, probably. Like, the amount of resistance that's being applied to downward... The amount of resistance crypto is showing is telling me, yeah, we're pretty close to the bottom already. All right. In the meantime, inflation is working itself out and getting lower, hopefully. All right. Ramble on and off, let you all go tomorrow. Hmm. I don't really expect anything uh, major either. We're also going to take a look at this. And then, I don't know, i got to figure out a title, clickbait title for this YouTube video because, again, there's really not much... There's not really much going on, so, yeah. All right, see you all tomorrow. Thanks.